everything is is already set and everybody's doing well. Why did why did God send Jesus? Anybody want to start on that before I? <coughs> why did God send Jesus? Hmm. They were standing and sacrificing, standing and sacrificing animals after animals after animals. Mm -hmm. So he sent the ultimate lamb, the ultimate sacrifice, and that was Jesus, his son. Okay. Anybody else want to work with that? Go ahead. Uh, go, Barry. Passion. Yeah. Sending his son that demonstrates the way that we are now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. There was no intercessor for man. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody? I think he made it clear <coughs> so that just because I'm sitting Jesus don't mean he have another God. It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit which makes us one. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, all good answers. No wrong answers. Everybody's got a good answer. Okay, there's no wrong answer. Um, but in this particular lesson, we talked about God and his creation and how the world was created at the very beginning. And we know in Genesis, God created uh, everything. He created heaven and earth, and he, but, and he created man from what? From the dust of the earth. So what did that give us? That gave us relationship, kinship, to everything that God created, everything that, that's been created, even with us, with the dust of the earth, all of us, we are part of everything that God created. We're part of the atmosphere. We have a relationship with that. We have a relationship with, um, you, you, you sit in the sun and the sun changes you. The wind blows. It gives you, it rains. You get a different attitude. You you, you are actually connected naturally to everything God made naturally. We all know God. Everybody knows God. Whether they want to serve him or don't want to serve him or whether they want to recognize that he's God, you got to know that he's God because every, you are connected with everything that he made. Everybody agree with that. You, you have a connection. Everything he made, we know that we are connected to God. We, 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 we move, we, everything. And when God made man, what God had really shown me is that the, the, the main reason for his, his Jesus' birth was to now put us in fellowship with God, in relationship with God. We were in fellowship with God, but not in relationship with God. So, Everybody, that's why people will tell you, I know God, but everybody don't have a relationship with God. They know God. They know God created the atmosphere. They know all this stuff couldn't stand without God. They have the knowledge, you know, that we got to have. There's a superior being, superior being somewhere that had to put all this stuff together. We could not do it. Man, no, he could not do it. Hey, man, you call him what you want to. People got so many names for God. Amen. But we do know it was a God. And man knows that he was born to actually worship God, to have fellowship with him. Adam and Eve had fellowship with God and not relationship. 
And I said that so I can y'all can get some. They knew God in fellowship. He visited them. They talked to him. They they knew his voice. They knew him. They he fellowship with them. They knew his walk. They knew, uh, but but they did not have that relationship. Anybody want to question that? Anybody got comments on that? Anybody want to say, you know, you might feel different. Tell me, well, how did he have a, re how did he have a relationship with them? Because the only thing that gives you a relationship is that you have to become part of that individual. You have to be, uh, as I said at Sunday, um, um, come here, little man. Let me do another, another. Come here, little man. Okay, okay, this is my godson. This is her natural son, her birth son. What's the difference? He loves me, I love him. We enjoy one, one another, but that's his natural mama. That's his God mama. What's the difference? He's not a part. He's not in me. He's not a part of. Is anybody getting that? What, what God wanted was us to be a part of him. He wanted us in him, not just fellowshipping with him. Because the fellowshipping thing wasn't working. That's why people, because every time he got out of their sight, they went to sin. Every time something happened, they went to sin. Every time they thought God wasn't there, they went to sin. They had to get some sacrifice. The goats had to just kill everything. Cause every time God got away from them, they went to sin. And so what God did was want to say, you know what? If my son will go, I'll build a relationship with them. I'll let him birth. That's why when he said, gee, Mary came through, uh, Mary was uh, conceived of the Holy Ghost, right? Without a man. The Holy Spirit pregnated Mary. That was God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. All three of them are one. So that's like God actually pregnated Mary in the Holy Spirit, all right? And, and, and she... Through her coming, her, he, no man was involved. It was only God. Jesus came through every generation, every problem, every situation, every condition. So now what it, what's happening now is that we now have a personal. God is not only in fellowship with you, but now He's, we have a relationship with him so that you feel him when he's not there. Just like the mama back there, something she could be anywhere. But if something is going on with this child, she going to know it. She go like, what's wrong, baby? He'll say, nothing, mom. Everything's fine. But she knows. Why does she know? Because she has a connection. And once God connected us with him, now he got it set up. So now we have a connection with one another. We have a connection with one another now because of being born again. Is that making sense? We're all been those that will accept Christ as Savior now born again, which all of us that are born again now, it gives us a relationship not only with God, but with one another. It's quiet in here. It, you got it, though. You got a relationship with him. We feel him now. He, he may not be with us. He may not be with mama. But now, he's, he, I, I know he might not be my son, but there's a connection there because God connected us now. There's a spiritual connection. 
It may not be a physical connection. We don't have to be no longer physically connected. Our physical connection was just fellowship. But my spiritual connection is I can know something's wrong with him. Now I can read him because, because of the spirit that God has given me. We can read each other now because of the spirit of God. And so it ain't only that we're together in fellowship. We're together, amen, in, in relationship. That's why something can be wrong. Somebody say, what's wrong? Somebody can be right around you say, what's wrong? What's going on, sir? What's going on? You know, and you don't know them. You don't have to know them. But the Spirit, the Spirit of God, amen, will intercede with you, in you, for them. Now you become an intercessor because you can go to God for somebody else. Anybody, you got that? So we now have a relationship. As, as, as members of the body of Christ, we are members, amen. We have a relationship with those that are in the body of Christ. So we are one. We are one body in Christ. Anybody here? All right. Thank you, sir. Amen. I think he got that. Did that make sense? Did anybody get it? Did, that, did they give you why Christ had to come? It's because he wanted to build a relationship, a relationship and not just fellowship. When Adam and Eve and Moses, he, he talked to all of them. But look what happened. He told Moses, go to the mountaintop. Moses went to the mountaintop, and Moses was also in charge of a, amen, a big group of people. And as long as Moses was there, they did good. But time Moses left for a few weeks, Amen. They, they couldn't feel nothing. Moses probably did. Moses ain't coming back. They ain't no need us doing this no more. So what did they do? They went to something that they can relate to, which is the earth. They can relate to it. We still got to worship. We still got to find something to worship. What do we worship now? Moses is gone. He don't tell us anything about God. There's no, we don't have a relationship with nothing else, but we, there's something in me telling me I got to worship. So what do we do? Let's just go and find something that we can connect to and put it together and worship it. So they got a golden calf. They got all the gold took all their gold, milled all their gold down, made them a golden calf, and that was their God. Before you get mad with them, before you get upset with them, let's think about what you are worshiping. You know, when you, when, you, when you feel like God is missing in your life and there's no God there, where do you turn? When you're feeling empty and you got nowhere to go, because we are worshipers. God made us to worship. God made us to know him. We all know him. We know him. Everybody will tell you they know God. The atheists will tell you I know God, but I'm not going to. I might like I don't know him. People will pretend, you know, because they don't want the laws and rules and the regulations that goes with God. See, when you claim God, there's some laws and rules and regulations and a lifestyle that have to be presented when you say you got God, and now there's no excuse because now you have a relationship. You have a relationship with him. So now you understand. So now God sent Jesus to die on Calvary so we would have a relationship. How many have a relationship? How many know the difference in having a relationship and being in fellowship? There's some people you in fellowship with and some people you have a relationship with. Is anybody here? Yes, ma'am. All righty. So understand that there's a big difference in relationship and fellowship. You know, man just talking to this girl, he got a fellowship. When he gets serious and they begin to talk to each other, begin to learn each other, and once they get married, they got a relationship. It's now a relationship. So it's, it's not as easy to break a relationship as it is a fellowship if you, can, if you understand it. If you don't understand relationship, you're just, it's nothing to you still in fellowship. So a lot of things, because of the lack of knowledge, we are destroyed. 
The Bible said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You're destroyed because you don't know. You're destroyed because, and when you're destroyed, you don't only destroy yourself, you destroy others. You destroy because you don't understand the relationship that you have with Christ. We don't understand one another. You don't understand that you got a relationship with one another. We are each other's strength. The Bible talks about us being the body of Christ. One might be the fingernail. One might be the leg. One might be the eye. One might be the arm, but it takes all of us to make a body. There's no just one, a head. They, a head without a body ain't no good. A head without eyes. A head without ears. A head without a mouth. See, some people get a kick out of being head, but you ain't got the rest of your body involved. So you got to have the whole body of Christ got to come in, and you have, and that, 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 that puts you together. But his purpose for him coming was to, for us to be born again. That's why John said, you must be born again. You just can't be in fellowship anymore. You got to get in so you can have a relationship so no matter what happens, if you feel like I'm not there, you know I'm still there because you have a relationship. Y'all's children may be off somewhere. And Yolanda, you know them, them boys, they could be gone off somewhere. You impress them, and them boys is out. But something in your spirit lets you know something ain't right. It's time for a phone call. It's time for a check. And you have to ask them and do a check. Because why? You got a relationship with them, even though they're not there. That's a relationship. Anybody with me? John 3 says, you must be born again. And so that's the importance of being born again. So many people have mixed up born again with joining the church. And so many folks you will find they will join the church and still don't have a relationship with Christ. And so that's why you can fall out of the church. You get mad with people in the church, and you'll get right out of church. Amen. Because you got a relationship with the church, but when you have a relationship with Christ, you might lead the church. I might find another church, but I'm keeping my relationship with God. Is anybody here? You understand that? So, you know, people say, I got church hurt. All that comes with the territory. But you got to understand your relationship is so much bigger than just being a member of the church. You have a relationship with God, so when you can't get here two, three, four o'clock in the morning, amen, we make, you remember when COVID came and we couldn't really come to this building like you wanted to, but we had a relationship. Because of that relationship, amen, we, we, we were still walking strong. The relationship kept us together. The relationship even though we couldn't see one another, we couldn't fellowship with one another, but we had a relationship. So that because of the relationship, we were able to keep right on rolling and not even see everybody. But everybody just knew because of their relationship with God, they obeyed God. And when you obey God, we're still good. Our job was to hear God. Our job was to obey God. Our job was still do what God wants you to do. Whether you're home, whether you're at church, wherever you may be, you're still obligated to God. But the people, amen, that were just set on being obligated to the church, so when the church closed, so many of them didn't come back because they were, they were just connected to the building. And they didn't have the, the connection a real connection with Christ because Christ tells us to forsake not the fellowship for one another, that we need each other. This fellowship here is to strengthen you, but your relationship is to give you life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. So God sent Jesus to die, to go into the tomb, amen, to, to, to be on the cross, to give his life, to die, amen, so that he would rise again. And when he rise, rose again, it was an indication that every last one of us, he said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit now that we have. We are spirit and not just physical. At one point in life, we were just physical, we thought. But now you are spiritual. There's a spirit, and, and we should learn how to live our spiritual life more so than our physical life. If we can satisfy our spiritual life, you'll be a happy individual. 
Because all these other things, the material things and all the things that you want and you desire is really not that serious when you're walking in the spirit. If you walk in the flesh, you'll find yourself sad. You'll find yourself distressed. You'll find yourself, amen, going through all kind of stuff because I just ain't got it. just ain't work. They don't love me. This don't work. I ain't doing it no more. I'm not going to have nothing to do with them. I don't like them. I'm not going to do this, amen, because you in the flesh, amen. I don't care. You can be a preacher. I don't care who you are. You can have a big old name, amen, but you're all upset because of your flesh when you're walking in Christ. You're walking a whole different life. He gives you an opportunity to walk differently, but you have to acknowledge that, and you have to now say, I'm walking by the, walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. Anybody got an idea? This ain't, in, when we talk about walking in the spirit and stuff like that, people think that means somebody's singing a song, and somebody got up here, and they just shouting, and they running from one side to the other, and they so happy. That is spirit, but that's just a form of, of praise. Amen. That's not walking in the spirit. You can walk in the spirit on a daily basis. That means keep my mind stayed on him. I'm walking in the spirit. I can just as calm as I am right now, but I'm walking in the spirit. I, my mind is on him. That's why he said, pray without ceasing. Your mind is on him. You're a spiritual individual when you keep your mind on God. You don't let all everything around you upset you. You ain't letting everything around you attack you. Is anybody here? You, and when you get in the flesh, you, if you're stressed out, guess where it's coming from? Huh? You ain't stressed out because of your spirit. I promise you that. The only reason you stressed out because of your spirit because you ain't fed it. And if you don't feed your spirit, you're going to feed your flesh. Something's got to be fled. You're going to walk either in the spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. Everybody's wrong in the flesh. When you're in your eyesight, the Bible says in our eyesight, all of us is right. That's why we got so many fights, so much argument, so much going. I know I'm right. And you can't even talk to people no more because they're right. In their flesh, they're right. But what did God say about it? Did anybody get anything from this? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the purpose of him coming was to live in us, to be a part of our lives, that we could get now and we can pray and actually have a relationship with him. You can actually love him because you ain't going though all the way up to heaven. Heaven has come to you. God is right there in you. The Bible says in Luke 17 and 20, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. The kingdom of God is where? Look at somebody and tell them, say, the kingdom of God is in me. Stop, stop using excuses. Well, you know I'm not perfect. Leave it alone. Don't tell nobody. Let them figure that out. If they haven't figured that out by now, <laughs> be happy. Don't say them just dwell on, well, you know I'm not perfect. Giving yourself an excuse. To do what you want to do. Don't do that. Just let them deal with that. Don't say, well, every time you do something to say, no. Well, you know, I'm not. No, you just live for God. And you walk in the spirit and get out of the flesh. You cannot please God with your flesh. No matter how much we shout and how much we run, it ain't pleasing him. This flesh does not please God. He's pleased when we're walking in the spirit. Watch what he says. I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind does what I so now, if his word, how many believe his word is true? Okay. How many of y'all walk in turmoil and stress and worrying and worrying about this and worrying about that? Do you know why? They say, press his word. His word is going to be right. So when people tell me, well, I'm just stressed out. I'm just filled with anxiety. I'm just, I just got to, and you're taking 40 pills, trying to keep yourself calm. And I mean, if that's what you do, is fine. But I'm telling you, if you get back in the way and get your mind on God and calm your nerves and think about how good God has been to you, the ways that God has made for you, the doors that God has opened to you, and stop trying to get ahead of God, stop trying to live tomorrow, and live today. You live in the day. 
And now you're already worrying about tomorrow. Lord, have mercy. I just don't know. Oh, God. Amen. And the enemy will mess your mind up. The enemy will play with your mind. And he'll, he'll, he'll give you dreams. He'll show you stuff. Amen. All kinds of stuff will go on in your life. And you'll be scared to wake up in the morning. But you got to know right now that God, my prayer is, God, whatever I go through today, it's you and I. No matter what it looks like, no matter how bad it gets, it's you and me. And you, ain't, you have never lost a battle. So I'm going to take you with me when I'm getting up. I'm leaving you with me. You ain't never lost. How many know God's never lost a battle? And how many know the ones that, you, you, that he's with you in, you haven't lost? How many know that the only battles you lost is the one that you took on by yourself? Am I in the room? You took it on by yourself and you lost it because you didn't acknowledge him. That sometimes you know, sometimes uh, God, will, it's like your children. Your children, your, your children would be a whole lot better off, those that got good parents, They'd be a whole lot better off if they paid attention and listened. They wouldn't have to take themselves through all this stuff that they're going through. All you got to do, person, you ain't going to tell your son nothing that's going to hurt them. You ain't going to tell your daughter nothing that's going to help hurt them that you believe. You're going to tell them some experiences that you've been through, and this is why I don't want you to do this because this is how it worked for me. And if they listen, you don't have to go through that. Some things you just put yourself through because you're hard-headed. And it's the same thing with God. If you ask God and talk to God and have a relationship with God, then God am I, you know, we having a big old deal over, over, over politics. Ask God, who, you, who would you vote for, Jesus? <laughs> He's always talking about what would Jesus do. Ask him that. <laughs> Everybody got their papers. Everybody got who they want. Everybody one like this one, one like that one. Yeah, well, God, what would you do? What would Jesus do? Somebody, he wouldn't do nothing. Well, okay. <laughs> you, Jesus, you're walking in his stead. You're walking in him. He will take care of us, no matter who it is, no matter who's the president, no matter who's the governor, no matter how many, is, how many can really say, it's God that has been taking care of me all my life. Ain't too many of us shook the president's hand. You know, ain't too many of us known nobody personally that was, that you know. But God took care of us. If he have done it, he'll continue. Is anybody in the house? Jesus had a very, go ahead. Uh-huh. They didn't have a relationship. They had a fellowship. Mm -hmm. and, I and I went back and I was reading where he created them from the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he breathed them in nostril and they became a living soul. Mm -hmm. Now, as I to say to that, that was just a fellowship, not a relationship, because if they had a relationship, say he wouldn't have entrapped them as easy as he did. I say that because when we die, we turn back to dust. Galatians. Because that's our first nature, mm -hmm. our first birth. Then when he said, uh, we must be born again. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we were born again of the spirit. That's right. Adam, what he says. Yeah, Adam and Eve didn't have the spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit that Adam and Eve had at this point was when he blew the breath of life in them, that was not the Holy Ghost. That was the, the breath for them to live, be a, become a living being. They became, the Bible said they became a living soul. He had already made them, but they was a dead soul without breath. So the breath made you a living soul. We didn't have his spirit to, 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 to be with us. Well, but, but he was always there the whole time. But it was in a cloud or it was in somebody else. Or he, he, he always would try to lead and guide us like he led and guide the Israelites what? with the clouds. He, 
He used Moses to, to take places. He, he, used, he did things to try to lead the people and guide the people. But everybody had to depend on someone else. You had to depend on the pope. Or you had to depend on the preacher. Or you had to depend on somebody else. Now he's saying, oh no, the veil has been, the veil now, you can go directly to God. You have a relationship so you know God for yourself. If you spend some time with him, he will reveal to you who he is. See anybody in here? Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, I, I remember reading in, uh, in Hebrews, Pastor, I believe, I believe it was in the first chapter. But anyway, it said that in the, in the former days, in the latter days, God, God dealt and spoke with the people by the prophets, through That's the right. fathers by the prophets. That's but right. in the last days, he's dealing and speaking with us through his son. He's speaking with us through his son. Through his son. It's through his son. The Spirit is speaking to us. That's why when I'm preaching or anybody's preaching, you go anywhere, and anybody's preaching and they're preaching the word of God, it, it's nothing going to be new. It's something, it's going to register with your spirit because you know God. God is in your spirit. It might be something you haven't heard before, and it might take you a time to digest it because, you know, sometimes God give me stuff and there's something like this that it's, sometimes it's hard to digest because this ain't what I've been taught all my life, and I got to go and try to research this and study this, and I got to get something out of this. I got to see where you're coming from. But God will reveal to you that this is truth. And that you do have to have a relationship with him. And that's what being born again is. It's having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Having a relationship with him. Knowing him. Knowing him. When you don't see him. When you don't feel him. When, you look like, when it looks like he's not there. You can always call him up. You're lonely because you won't call him. You're lonely because you want to be lonely. You're lonely because, you know, take for example, you know, sometimes you have people right in the house with you. And you can be lonely because you won't talk to them. You get hot, you get mad, I ain't saying nothing. They right there. Two weeks gone by. I ain't saying nothing. I just ain't going to talk. I know y'all never experienced that. Paul looking at me like he don't know what I'm talking about. But I understand Paul just looked right at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but relationships... I mean, you, you're right in the presence. You're right there. But you choose not to have communication. Now, if we don't know God, or God is not speaking to us, it's because we choose not to spend time with him, not to spend time with her. And you say, I got God. You do have him, but you're not communicating. You're still going to do what you want to do. I can like, you want to act. You're not... You're not, you're not thanking him when he gives you food. and All you got to do is acknowledge him. Say, thank you, Lord, for my food. My, thank you for having an appetite. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for what this food is going to do for me. God, I give you praise and I give you glory. We don't we just sit down to the table and go to eat. You know, we used to, like, really acknowledge God. Mama would say, before you go to bed, boy, have you prayed? You said your prayers before you got in that bed? And they come in there with you. Amen. And tuck in. And, and we didn't have a whole lot of money and a whole lot of other stuff. But mama would come in there with me and tell me about, get, get down on your knees. And you, have, you talk with God. You pray for you left for that school bus. Let us pray. You know, that's the type of relationship. And I understand that relationship right now better than I did when I was doing it. I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing it, Paul. But she was teaching me how to meditate on God. We would go to school. We would have to quote scriptures. We would have to pray. We would have to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We would have to honor. We would, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no. Now that's illegal. Worship. It was a, that was a teaching us how to worship God, how to spend time with God. Prayer is spending time with God. That's why he said pray without ceasing. And somebody said, why can't I pray without ceasing? I got a job, and I'm doing all this. I can't be, I got, I got a wife, I got a husband. How can I pray without ceasing? Praying without ceasing is keeping him on your mind at all times, just knowing that God is always there, knowing that God got you, praying without ceasing. When these little annoying thoughts and stuff come, you got, you got to put prayer on it. You already know. 
you, you seen the picture with the, with the, the devil on one side and the angel on the other side? It ain't going nowhere. It's still there. You got good and evil, and you have to make a decision which one you're going to do. And your relationship will determine on the decision you make. Not your church, not, not how many services you've been to. You can not miss a service and still blow it. You can preach and still blow it. You can have all these titles and still blow it because your relationship ain't strong enough. You have to have a relationship to have a debt with God. It's not about, amen, how many, we ain't missed no Sunday school since I've been here. And you can be just as mean as you want to be. You can teach Sunday school and be mean. <laughs> and yes, sir, Preston. Uh, you know, these simple things that you're bringing out. Yes. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world that when man reject the word, uh, even the word that's, that's, that's set to deliver us out of affliction and oppression, and when we don't just consider his word, this is the condemnation. Yeah. The condemnation is like now, it's, it's very clear. It's very right. plain. Right. And uh, uh, John, John, John 13 mm -hmm. uh, teaches us that. Um, I uh, just lost it. I just lost the train of thought. But again, yeah. dealing with the word, dealing with um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, using that word. I, I want to break it. Can I bring this out, Pastor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. This is the last part. John 13 and 47. Okay. If any man hear my words and believe not, uh -huh. I judge him not. Mm -hmm. For I am come not to judge the world, but to save the world. Yeah. So even in that, your judgment is already set. No, it's not what he, he did not come, as we would say, to condemn us. God knows what everybody's doing. He had to share that with me. He knows what everybody does. And he doesn't come because he wants to condemn us for what we've done. He wants to change us so we won't do it. He's not worrying about, well, I'm going to punish you for this. That's not the whole purpose of the deal. The thing is, hey amen, I want you to know what you're doing so you can turn, so you can change, so you can be better. Everything that God tells you to do bring betterment out of your life. If he's not going to tell you to do anything, and your life is not going to be better, I promise you. If he sends you somewhere or tells you, that's why people tell me, well, God told me to go. If God told you to go, it's going to benefit you. If, if he told you to go. But if you hear the, that little voice on this side. And you thought it was God. Because I mean, you know, God, I mean, both voices sounds alike. Both voices are very similar. Especially when you want to do something. It sounds like God. And you think it's right because you did it. It sounds like God when you want to do it. And God told me to do this. Why come God can't never tell you to do nothing you don't want to do? Come in and sit down and be still. See the salvation of the Lord. He ain't want to do that. <laughs> come and worship me. Praise the Lord. Come give me glory. Give me praise. He ain't want to do that. You want him to tell you something spectacular to make you stick out. Why do he got to tell you something to make you just stick out? Why you just can't listen at the little simple things? Love the Lord thy, thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and all thy soul. Love me. Love me. You can't hear him say love me, but you can hear him telling you everything else. You can't tell him love thy neighbor as thyself. Love that brother. Love that sister. You, for some reason, that's hard to hear. Hold on. Don't turn her loose. Don't let go. Don't be angry. Be angry and see it not. Don't lose control because you're angry. Get control of your life. You don't hear that. You can't hear those voices. Yes, ma'am. Oh, somebody always <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I uh, got gotcha. you. I was listening to um my old pastor. He does he still does 
online, uh -huh. and I was listening to him. He was talking about understanding the desert life. Uh -huh. and he was talking about how when you're in the desert, you know, you can feel so alone. You feel like, okay, I'm the only one going through this. You know, I'm struggling. And he said, it's three things you got to learn. He said, God is there for, it's Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 6. Uh -huh. He said, God is there. For, when you're in the desert, you're supposed to remember God is still there. He's still taking care of you. He said, he, he, t he said, so when you get your car, your house, your beans, yes. don't forget about God. Okay. He said, people get there, they get their house, they call their beans. He said, then everybody be like, well, wait a minute, what happened to so-and-so? Yes. You forgot about God. Mm -hmm. I don't have time because, um, you know, I got, I got to drive my beans. When I had a bicycle, I could try to get to church so I could get a bean. Then when you got your beans, your whole attitude changed. You know, and, 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 and it's hard because that people think that God don't want them to have. People take that scripture and says, you know, uh, uh, the, the love of money. You, you don't understand. God never said anything about he didn't want you to have money. He didn't want you to be rich. Being rich is, a, is, is awesome if that's what you desire and that's what you want. But can you remain? Can you stand? Can you still have the love of God? and be rich. I think that's where the rich, and I'm talking about, you know, God don't have a problem with us. When I was in church in my younger days, you know, they, they just actually taught you, you know, you need to be poor. If you were, the poor you were, the more God you had. That's what people thought. You know, the poor you are, you know, God loves you, and you see people riding around in nice cars and all that, and you, you, you throwing your head up, and and my, they going to hell. They going to hell. They ain't going to never make it. Amen. Them folks going to hell. You don't have to go to hell because you have something. Everything in the world. God said, I made the world. And everything in it is mine. You can go to hell. You can go. Huh? 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 I said, we were talking prosperity was in heaven. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking everything is going to until you die. You're going you're gonna to walk and go. When you die, you're going to get up in heaven. You're going to get you a white robe. All that stuff when you get to heaven. You know, you ain't going to enjoy none of it now. But when you get to heaven, you're going to get it all. But I got a feeling if you don't enjoy life now, you ain't going to enjoy life later. Because people think being in God is a burden. I mean, some people think that being in God is like, there, there's no joy. There's no, you know, you, got, you can't smile. You can't enjoy life. You can't, because people think enjoying life is always about sin. But that's not enjoying life. Enjoying life is walking in the righteousness of God. Enjoying life, man. You can be right by yourself walking or whatever you're doing and just enjoying the spirit of God being in your life. You'll start paying attention to the roses and the trees and houses that have been there for years and you never paid any attention to them. Things that you never paid any attention to will show up and, and, and your life and, you, and, and the, air, the air is different. You're walking and you, when you're thinking about God, the air is just different. You can walk out and the sky looks different. And you're trying to tell somebody else the sky is different, but they can't see it. God's showing that to you. That's your personal. He's revealing to you. Amen. You look out in the trees, they're so pretty and green. And you say, them trees are so beautiful and so green. But I'm not seeing that right now. You know, I'm going to go along with you. They are pretty and green, but I don't really see what you see. Because God will reveal things to you that he won't reveal. You can be right with somebody and, and, and you're looking at the same thing and see it differently. Anybody here? So do you understand the importance of making sure that you got a relationship with Christ? See, Christ ain't going to tell you, well, I, I just don't want you cursing. I just don't want you drinking. I just don't want you. It's not about that. It's about building a relationship that will make you strong. God is about building you. He's already strong. You know, he, he wants to give you strength. What he said, I've supplied all your needs. And when I ask you right now, what do you need? If God was to ask you a question right now tonight, what do you need? Who got a need? You got some wants, 
And if you got some needs, it's because you haven't acknowledged that your needs has been met. They already been met, may not be manifested, but they're met. Everything you will ever need, everything you will ever get is already here. Before I got where I was, the stuff was already here. I had to get it. Everything I thought was so hard and so tough and all that kind of stuff, it was here the whole time. Whatever you're going to get the rest of your life is going to be here. If you're going to get another house, the house is already here. You're not going to, well, I'm going to wait till God sends me a husband or a wife. Ain't nothing floating from up there coming down with you. Your husband or your wife are already here if you're going to get one. <laughs> it's up to you to pick up a chooser, but you ain't going to wait. He ain't going to be no special to you. Oh, well, I'm going to get me a special one this time. I'm waiting. If you don't send me one from heaven, I ain't getting him. Okay, you stay. Keep looking. <laughs> wait till he floats down, and then you, you know what I'm saying? He's going to drop him down to you like he's coming out in the parachute. God going to give me my wife. God ain't giving you no wife. He told you what to look for. He, he, she's already here. Your husband's already here. If you don't want one, you ain't got to have one. You can stay right by yourself. <laughs> but don't get mad with everybody else when they get one. <laughs> yes, sir. Had, yeah. God was always showing them Himself, telling them to stand still in a valley. Yes. Never up on a mountain, looking at this house, no. looking at this husband. You're always. He was always telling them to stand still when he told them to encamp somewhere. Yes. Sir. And it was usually in a valley, the way the enemy was looking down on them, and they looked like, okay, well, we could easily be taken out from here. Yeah. He said, stand still. Yeah. Stand still. You don't worry about it. And then he said, open their eyes and let them see. See the event. The the, the thing is that you don't see, you don't see God. And, and really, when you start getting your dream, it's normally in valley experiences. When you want the houses, when you don't have the money. <laughs> ain't that funny? You ain't got nothing. It's a valley experience. When you think you want it, it ain't there. All of a sudden, you got this desire for it. And guess what? You create that desire in your mind. And it comes to pass. Everything you got, you dreamed about it. Everything you got came because of your thought pattern. Your mind is a bad, that your mind is tough. Your mind will bring it to you. I'm telling you, if you can think on it and you focus on it, it's yours. <coughs> Thing is, we focus on bad things and we get bad things. But you can, you can focus on great things and get great things. But you got to stay focused. You got to focus on, and, and we got so many things that distracts us. And again, because, of the, because we're connected with this creation, we, we, it's more easier for us because of the creation and the stuff in the world. It's more easier to grasp that than it is your spirit because you've been You've been dealing with your physical all your life. And now I'm trying to tell you to start walking in the spirit and dealing with your spiritual being and watch God lift you up spiritually. So get your mind in order and it'll all come to you. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Start thinking differently. Start thinking you're a winner. Start thinking what he says. You have the victory. You are more than a conqueror. You're not a conqueror because of what you have. You're a conqueror because of who you have. Anybody here? You're a winner because of who is in you. And you don't always look like you're winning when you won. You don't always look victorious. You seen some teams you didn't think would win? <laughs> I thought that would be a good time to bring this out. Mm -hmm. Y'all just keeping up. There were some teams that you just thought couldn't be beat. And there was a little Cinderella team over there, swept them right off their feet. They didn't think they could win. But it's who got the fire. Who believes? You can't believe because that giant is bigger that you're going to lose the battle. You can't believe because, amen, somebody has more than you have, you ain't going to win. That has nothing to do with this. 
it has all to do with your mental, mental capacity and how you can bring yourself into the spirit. If you can get into the spirit of God, nothing is impossible, but you got to know it's, it's impossible in the flesh. But it's not impossible in the spirit. When you get in the spirit, you forget about you and what you can do. You can forget about your powers and who you are and all of this. And so when emergencies is needed and you're in the spirit, you'll do it. You, that's the people be talking about, well, that he's a hero. Ain't no hero. It wasn't him. If you ask him, any hero, anybody that did anything great, they weren't thinking about themselves. They weren't thinking about, oh, you know, I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to go in this fire and save these children. No, they didn't look at the fire. They weren't even thinking about the fire. All they saw were the kids. And the Spirit of God was moving in them, going to get them, get them, get them out of there. And they were protected. And then people put them on television, talk about the hero, and they said, well, I don't feel so much about the hero. When I look back at it now, if it had been me, I wouldn't have went in there. <laughs> you, 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 so you better be glad that the Lord showed up. Because somebody would have got burned if I'd have been thinking about going in there. So you can't go in there in the flesh. That fire too hot. People are standing out there. Probably other people standing out there. They wouldn't go in. Why? Because they was in their flesh. They were looking at what could happen to them. I'm going to get burned. I'm going to do this. When you're in the spirit, you're not worrying about what's happening to you. The three Hebrew boys, throw me in there. If I perish, I just perish. But let me go. Put me in there. And they went through the fire furnace. Why? They didn't go in that fire furnace fleshly. You're not going to go through it fleshly. It's going to take the Spirit of God being in there with you. That's why they said there's a fourth man in here with us. Somebody else was in here. See, he couldn't be in them then, so he was with them. So see, he, he does the same thing with you as he does in you, but he's better when he's in you because you don't always recognize that he's with you. But there's no reason for you not to recognize that he ain't in you because all you got to do is stir him up. And all you got to do to stir him up, I dare you to start talking about him. I dare you to start praising him. I stay, dare you to start giving him glory. I dare you to start worshiping him, and you will get out of you. You will stop being so, I'm so sick of this, and I'm so tired of going through this, and I'm so, I won't never do this no more. And I, you just get shot up. Grab you a word. Grab Psalm 91. And start praying Psalm 91 on your life. And you put it there. I don't care how low I am, God. You promised to be there with me. See, low ain't low when God is there with you. See, sometimes there's certain people with you in certain things, and God knows it ain't as bad because they got them with me. You know? Somebody come, I'm always picking on Paul, I don't know why. Somebody come to the door, Sherry in the back room, and somebody come to the door. Oh. Sherry going to say, <laughs> Sherry's in the back room. Sherry, she act like she don't hear nothing. Let Paul act like he don't hear nothing. Hey, Paul, where you at? Somebody out there trying to tear my door up. Sherry ain't going to run to that door. Why? Because she got a covering. She got a Paul. And Paul goes to the door. Hey, what's up? You know, he might have to go to the other room before he goes to the door, but he, <laughs> he going to the door. But he's going to be ready when he get to the door. You know, because somebody come and they just beating on your door like that, you got to, you know, hold on. But you're protected, and that same protection is what we have with God. Somebody else may not be married, may not have a husband, and somebody go to beating on their door like that. And God will just tell them, be still. God will speak to them. You ain't got to go to that door. Sit down. Be calm. You don't have to answer the door because somebody knock on. 
If you think you're in danger, let them know. Somebody act like, no. Do you know you answer your phone call you want to? You don't have to answer that thing call it ring. <laughs> you, you, you save a lot of time. If you start governing it and stop letting it govern you, you got to take charge of things in your life and not let everything have charge over you. The Spirit of God is in our life. God sent Jesus to die on the cross, went to, and resurrected us from the dead. He came back up, but he also resurrected us from the dead. My main reason for knowing that God lives, I wasn't there, if I be honest with y'all. I was not there when they walked Jesus down up to the Kakatha Hill. I wasn't there. I wasn't there when they hung him on the cross, when they put nails in his hand, nails in his feet. I wasn't, I'm not one of the witnesses. I wasn't there. I wasn't there when Mary and the sisters went to the tomb and they found that he wasn't there. I wasn't there. I mean, I talk about it just like I was there. I wasn't there. But I tell you where I was. I was sinking. Deep in sin. Far from a peaceful shore. Very deep disdain within. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now save am I. That's how I know he lived because of the change in my life. I don't know he lived because I'm a pastor. I don't know he lived because of a thing. I know he lived because I could not have came out of what I came out of without somebody. And mama told me to call on Jesus. And so when I got down in the valley, when nobody else wanted to come and get me, that's who I called. And he said, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your body. So my evidence of him rising from the dead is me rising from the dead. See, because you can be living but still be dead. The Bible says in Timothy, he that liveth in pleasure is dead while they live. So a lot of dead people, and nobody have experienced getting out. You don't have to do the things you do. You choose to do them. You don't have to act like you act. You don't have to get so mad that you kill somebody. You don't have to get so upset. You don't have to do these things. These are things that you release yourself to. You, you choose. You choose your life. You choose the life you want to live. God sent his son so he would be in our spirit so that we could help make decisive decisions. Be happy or be sad. You can think of stuff all the time to be sad about. They took my house. They took my car. Grandma died. Everybody left me. I'm here by myself. Don't think you can be sad about. But then you can take that same person and say, you know what? God has restored to me everything that the canker worms have eaten. I still got my life. I still got hope. I still got a chance. I still got, I got another birthday. God has blessed me. I, I'm doing good. I didn't think I could make it. <laughs> Is anybody here? It's how you're thinking. If you can't change your thinking, your thinking will change your behavior. If you will think right, you will live right. You think wrong, you go wrong. It's your fault. You think it before you do it. Your thoughts is what's guiding you and leading you. And if you don't have the ability to, 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 to pick out your thoughts, everything come across your mind ain't from God. And you have to decipher it. You have to take time and study you. Why am I thinking like this? Why am I doing this? Why am I acting like this? The scriptures don't agree with how I'm acting. The scriptures don't cover me. See, when people don't want to believe the scripture, there's no covering. The only thing that covers you is the word. 
And when you get out of the word, that's like, that's blaspheme. Because there's nothing that can help you when you don't believe the word. The word is your last resort. But if you believe that word of God, it'll bring you out in every situation. I don't care what it looks like. If you believe God's word, you can turn, you can change it. You believe God's word. I'm doing this because God's word. I'm doing this because I'm being led by the Spirit to do this. I'm not doing this so much, amen, because something I decided to do or something I wanted to do. But the Spirit is leading me into this, and it's according to the Word of God. God will tell you to eat right, and then he'll show you the Scripture and tell you what y'all to be eating. And you'll start doing it. Why? Because now you are conforming to the Word. But when you don't want to conform to that part of the Word, you still don't mean you ain't in God, but this part of the word is not going to affect you because you're not working that part of the word. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. I wish that you, I want you to have money, but if you don't focus on trying to have and trying to, to it don't work. Your thought pattern, I'll never have nothing. Money don't grow on trees. It ain't going to work for me. They'll never hire me. You're right. That's your thought. Nobody can think but you. And your thinking is why you're where you are right now, good or bad. You thought yourself here. I believe I can be healed. Oh, you know, the doctor said I never make it. You're right. Go ahead and go to the funeral and get your stuff together. Plan it. Think the worst for yourself. And you got it. But his spirit in us, when you wake up the spirit of God in your life, you can wake him up. You can go and talk to him. And you don't need no room of people. He said, go in your secret closet and start talking to me. Make some time for me. And I'll, I'll show you. I'll bring you up. I'll bring deliverance into your life. I can change you to the point of you would never think, even you, you think other people are surprised about you. I will have you shocked about you. Is anybody in the room? I will be shocked. You know, I look at and I'm, I'm shocked. I know some of y'all are surprised, but I'm shocked. My classmates and stuff will come in, they shocked. But they don't know. I'm just as shocked as they is. I never thought life would be like this. I never thought I'd be in this state. I never thought life could be so good. They come in, I remember when. I do too. And I never thought I could change. I never thought this would work. I never thought it was true. I ran away from it. I don't want no religion. I ain't going to nobody else's church. When I get out of here and I'm getting grown, I'm gone. But see, I was looking at religion and I wouldn't, didn't, wouldn't, was not looking at because nobody hadn't told me about my relationship. But when I got that relationship, he started leading me, guiding me, showing me, blessing me. If he say don't do it, don't do it. If he say don't go, don't go. If he say cut it off, cut it off. But you just don't know, Pastor. Uh, cut it off. You got to hear the voice. Once you hear the voice, all things are possible. All things are possible once you hear the voice. But if you, you get so tied up into your voice and you can't hear his voice, it ain't possible. It will carry you down and wear you down the rest of your life. But he died on Calvary, put in a grave, got back up on the third day morning for your sins and mine. And, and when you think about it was about sin. But see, you're going to continue to sin until you have a relationship. You don't get away from sin just because you're at church. Folks will come to church and they get mad with people. He's still doing this and she's still doing that. They got to build a relationship, babe. Give them some time. Give them some process. I thought they were perfect. You see her roll her eyes at me. Why were you looking at me? <laughs> you know, there are some people, man, that, that you have to learn how to, to cycle out. You have to learn how. 
when people say things, you have to learn how to. Don't even, don't even, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. You got to learn how to cut it. Let it go. And keep on going. Don't even get mad. Don't get upset. Just keep on going. Folks going to say things in your life. And they don't care whether they hurt you or not. Matter of fact, someone won't hurt you. But I don't let you know whether it hurt or not. It don't make that much difference. Don't let people know. Just keep on going. Let them think. Because people will think what they want to think you thinking. Everybody know what you thinking. I got to get up. Y'all don't believe that. You know how much trouble we get in because we know what everybody else thinking. Everybody know what you thinking. Look at Christine. She's always, and you already know her because you've seen her, but you don't know her. You don't know her. Look at Preston. You're just sitting over there, but I, I know how, I seen him. I see how he sat there. And the Spirit is telling me something, something, uh huh. Uh, see, I see how close he's sitting to Yolanda. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Something about that. See, folks will pick up mess, man, that ain't you ain't thought about. Yeah, just make up some stuff and wonder why in the way. And you'll believe it. You'll believe it because it came from you. You don't even believe you'll lie to you. How I many know you'll lie to yourself? And then other people trust you. <laughs> you'll lie to your own self, man. So you can't take everybody at heart. The Bible says trust in the Lord with all thy heart and all thy mind. People love you one minute and cut you the next minute. And you got to know that. But Jesus Christ died so that he resurrected so that we could be different, so that we could be changed, so that we can grow, so things can fall off of our lives. As you learn, you come to the knowledge of things fall off of your life. You're a Christian. If you can't get here, you still got a relationship with him. You still, you know, that was one big thing that my granddaughter said that, you know, she got from me. Um, and I never recognized her. Now, she said, that's just how you taught us. I didn't know I was teaching it then. I was just teaching. And she said, when she, when she left and she went out, she said something very important. She said, Granddaddy, you taught me one thing, that God is always with me, that I don't have to be here. I don't have to be there. Don't have to listen to that one. Don't have to listen to this one. God is always, I can always contact God. And that was real big. And I wanted to just make sure that I tell everybody, you know, it's good to have connections, but there ain't a greater connection than to be connected with your God, that you know your God. In the wee wee hours of the morning, you know your God. You know, I got a God that every morning, I'm in talking about in the wee wee hours of the morning, every morning, we up and talking. I don't, I don't miss a morning without it. He going to get me. Okay, I don't sleep that hard that he can't wake me up. And I'm glad about it. Amen. And he used to get up and he'd give me stuff. And I said, okay, I'll get up in a minute. And then i go to sleep and forget it. <laughs> okay, can't remember. So now you got to get up. Cause you got to write it down. When he speaks to you, you got to get it. Because it's a revelation. He'll reveal things to you. He'll show you things. He'll show, this is real, y'all. This is a real life. He'll show you. He'll show you some things. Okay? Any questions, anybody? Somebody give God a hand. Y'all so quiet up in here.